everybody is always really excited about building a home server, but I have something unique and interesting from Seed Studio. I mean, sure, it's a tiny computer, small form factor computer, big deal, that's nothing new. 11th gen Tiger Lake, it's got Thunderbolt, some other nifty options like two and a half gig ethernet. But what if I told you it also has a Raspberry Pi coprocessor? Coprocessor? What's a Raspberry Pi co? Well, they just shoved a Raspberry Pi in here, which can also run fun, interesting things, in addition to the Intel Tiger Lake system. And this thing doesn't use hardly any power. Let's unbox and take a look. So this is the ReServer x86A1135. This is an 11th gen Tiger Lake i5 1135G7, dual channel DDR4 3200 up to 64 gigabytes. It'll do SATA Gen 3 uh, for two mechanical hard drive storage. So I've got two 20 terabyte hard drives we're gonna put in here. PCIe Gen 4 by four by one, so you get a PCIe slot. And then you've got two and a half gig ethernet and the i225V LAN port, and there's two of those. As well as, as well as an integrated Arduino coprocessor ATSAMD21 ARM Cortex M0 Plus. It's got HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort 1.4. In addition to that, it's also got three M.2 B key, E key, and M key. So that means you can add your M.2 Wi-Fi adapter, which I just so happen to have here, Intel Wi-Fi 802.11 AX adapter, plus all the other stuff. In the accessory box, you've got your Wi-Fi paddle antennas. These are at least a little better than the smaller rubber duck antennas. A screwdriver, looks like a miniature fan extension cable, and here is our server. It's scarcely bigger than two three and a half inch mechanical hard drives. There is no one's desk that this would look out of place on. This is so cool looking. Metal. I also like the cooling design. It's got one big fan in the bottom that's going to pull air in from the bottom and chimney it out the top. That's a pretty good design. Now inside, I note they've made a few really interesting design choices. One, the SATA ports are color coded. So you can see the SATA connections on the front of the motherboard. There's a red one and a black one. And then of course we have red and black connectors built right in. Okay, cool, makes sense. Our PCI Express 4 slot is here, but it seems to be blocked by the top of the three and a half inch, you know, mechanical hard drive trays. Could probably use it somehow with a breakout ribbon cable or something like that. I can get creative and get something in there. We've got our dual channel DDR4. Two M.2 slots at the bottom and one at the top. There is also an embedded DisplayPort connection at the top edge of the motherboard for future fun projects. Now, as you start digging into this and looking at the interesting stuff that's available here, you'll notice on Seed Studio's website, they actually document everything. And so there's different motherboards, there's different internal modules that you can get for this. And that's why our ports on the side over here don't necessarily align perfectly. You could get a Thunderbolt option, for example. And that's why our, if you're gonna use both of your mechanical hard drives, you'll have to do something creative with this physical PCI Express by four expansion slot, because it's not exactly a normal expansion slot. There's not really a way that you can connect this. Of course, I can use a ribbon cable and get it connected but there's something sort of special going on. C Studio publishes and documents the connectors and the specifications and the sizes and everything else. It's like this top, you could 3D print an alternative top to connect to the embedded DisplayPort connector and turn this into a physical display. C Studio would be more than happy to work with you to put your logo on this or do a custom case or a custom something else, which is, you know, again, it's the whole maker thing. If you wanna put this in something, you can. If you just want the motherboard and you don't want the case because you're going to build your own case, you can. That's an option with this. This would actually be pretty good for an RV or something like that. You could put multiple 5G modems in here and turn this into a uh, TCP multipath router, for example. Maybe you could combine a USB 5G modem with a M.2 5G modem or two. Deploy that on this and this could be a nice low power under 60 watt solution for that but with all the horsepower of a Tiger Lake i5. I mean, the, my, my imagination is running wild with all the stuff that you could possibly do with this. For me, two 20 terabyte mechanical hard drives for storage, and I'll probably throw in two M.2 just for a uh, mirrored setup. So I'll mirror the M.2 for storage, and I'll mirror the mechanical hard drives. So it'll be 20 terabytes of available space with two 20 terabyte mechanical hard drives. You wanna run Open Media Vault, no problem. You wanna run TrueNAS, no problem. All of those have been tested on this. It's basically an x86 PC. You've got DisplayPort and HDMI out over here. You don't have to use the embedded DisplayPort connection. And so it gives you a lot of options in terms of what you want to do with the system. Power button and the reset button. 
the bottom here, and it's so tiny. It's so it's barely bigger than a stack of two hard drives. And it's important to keep in mind the M.2 configuration. You got four PCI Express lanes for your M.2 at the bottom, but at the top, really, it says it's only the one. One PCI Express 3.0 lane and one USB 3.0 lane. That's probably okay. I picked up a bunch of Intel Optane on sale. There's some links below. So we've got 258 gig Optane. Now these are only two PCI Express lanes and these aren't the fastest, but I'm gonna use these for caching in our TrueNAS setup. I definitely wouldn't wanna use, you know, too high performance NVMe because it's not gonna run that fast. Or if I was, I would wanna figure out some sort of adapter for this PCI Express by four slot so that it wouldn't bottleneck. Now remember, if you're gonna install a wireless card, you wanna do that first because it's actually gonna be under the normal M.2. It's gonna be in this slot right here. Nice short, low profile, and you'll also need to connect up your antennas before installing the rest of your storage. You also wanna install your memory. That's pretty easy to install. And then we just mount our hard drives. I plan to use smaller hard drives, but hey, 20 terabytes, I'm not gonna say no. Now, if you did wanna use two and a half inch hard drives, you could, there's holes on the bottom for mounting that as well. And that's it, both of our mechanical hard drives are connected at this point, and we got plenty of storage. Let's plug it in and see what happens. At this point, you've got a more or less normal PC, PC installation. Now, it's a little bit not normal when it comes to the Raspberry Pi component of the, the show, and that's one of the premium things you get for the price point. I mean, if it comes down to comparison shopping and pricing and pricing for features, it is a little on the premium side. I mean, we are talking about Tiger Lake. And I have featured some videos that are based around Alder Lake and some of the really inexpensive Alder Lake CPUs. I mean, you get the six core, the six P core Alder Lake CPU pretty inexpensively, but by the time you build the entire rest of the system, it's not gonna be as small and quiet as this. Arguably, possibly rivaling this in terms of power efficiency, but this whole package tops out at 60 watts and the bulk of that power is going to your mechanical hard drives this does have a vapor chamber cooling system so this cpu is going to turbo all the time if you configure it that way in the bios and the bios is fully unlocked everything is there that you could possibly want to configure on this tiger lake platform so if you wanted to use this as a starting point to build something really custom this would be a pretty good place to start you could really go nuts building a, a routing platform or a storage platform. This is pretty much the perfect home server in its configuration. I think you could run a sort of a redundant, quasi-redundant uh, home assistant setup with this because you've got the, the Raspberry Pi interface as well as the, the local interface. You could move things between Docker and just save and back up your configuration. So for an ultimate home server, in the smallest possible space. 20 terabytes usable in this with mirroring and redundancy is pretty good. Oh no, there's only four storage devices and I'm gonna have mirrored M.2 and mirrored mechanical storage. Where do I install TrueNAS? You could make creative use of your PCI Express by four expansion slots. So this is one of the smallest adapters that you can get. This will turn your PCIe slot into an M.2 slot and then you'll have three M.2 slots that you can use for storage. That would work with an extension cable or if you got creative about your mechanical hard drive mounting. I mean, you could go down to one mechanical hard drive and then you got all that room for activities. You could also just run with a single M.2 that you use for your TrueNAS operating system and use your redundant storage, your SATA storage for your actual important data. If something bad happens and your M.2 drive dies, you'll still be able to recover your information because the ZFS pool will have only existed on your mechanical hard drive. You can just re-import it on a fresh installation. Of course, you'll, you'll lose your TrueNAS configuration unless it's also backed up to the ZFS pool, which TrueNAS can do automatically. Uh, me, I, I like getting creative. So I'm gonna use the PCI Express 4 expansion slot to add a third M.2, which is very small, 16 gigabytes. We'll use that for internal storage. Now you could also use the USB 2 header. There's USB disk on module options. It's a USB 2 header, you can add that. You need at least a 16 gigabyte, I recommend 32 if you're gonna do that. But again, you know, USB, wire leveling, TrueNAS actually does chew up those disks pretty good. Don't know that I 100% recommend that, but it is an option. With our TrueNAS installation tackled, what's the next fun thing that we can do with this setup? Well, we've got that onboard processor. Now, depending on which model of reserver you get, the higher end models have support for ECC, and they also have the onboard Raspberry Pi, but you could get the lower end models like the i3 that have the ARM Cortex 
processor that you can use with uh, Arduino Studio, Sketchpad, whatever you want to call it, and build your own custom functionality into that module. So you get some options either way. Now if you do opt to use the 5G module, you gotta be wondering, where do you insert your SIM? Well, you insert your SIM on the side, on the side motherboard. It's not a micro SD slot. Now my particular model does not actually have the onboard Raspberry Pi. This is the 1135 i5. So that means that it's got the onboard Arduino sketchpad interface thing. It shows up as a USB device. So obviously this makes a pretty interesting platform for home server storage, but because of the extras like the Raspberry Pi on board or Arduino, depending on which model you pick, it opens up a world of possibilities. You got any ideas? Let's build something more interesting than a storage server with this. Although as a storage server, it does seem to work pretty well. In case you're wondering about the finer points of the TrueNAS configuration, there really wasn't much to it. Both the uh, NVMe storage as well as the mechanical storage show up. Now the printed circuit board on mine, I thought it said it's PCI Express by one, but when I look at the electrical interface, it's actually PCI Express by two. So our top M.2 slot, that's uh, you know meant for your cellular modem, has a PCI Express 3.0 by two connection, which is the same as our 58 gig Optane module. And the bottom slot is PCI Express, it's four PCI Express 3.0 lanes, but our 58 gig Optane module is only using two of those. And we still have four lanes in the slot for the other interface for, in this case, permanent storage. I've got two onboard RS-232 headers that I could break out into other connectors, and everything is modular. Like I can take these plastic sides off and have other modules in here other than mechanical storage if mechanical storage is not your cup of tea. You could put other stuff in here. If you put SATA hard drives in here, there's all kinds of room for activities and custom boards and that sort of thing. And I'm sure the Seed would love to talk to you if you want to build something really custom around this product. That's sort of part of their business model. It's like DIYers and it's like, okay, you want to build your own Internet of Things lab? That's totally fine. We can research that. But also this thing is super modular. So maybe we can just make little modules for this that'll be able to do this, that, and the other, which is, I like that. I like that approach, that reusability and everything else. It's pretty awesome. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. It's been a look at the reserver, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Let's talk ideas. What do you want to see with this? I bet you can come up with something really awesome, and I'd love to do a video on it. All right, I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Oh, and actually, Seed Studio has a little contest going, or a little coupon rebate thing, saying, hey, what what do you want in a sort of a DIY? Like, what would you like to see in terms of a paint by numbers thing? What's your ideal? What are you what are you building? What's what's awesome? I love how quiet this thing is. The loudest thing about it is definitely the hard drives. But what do you want to see? All right. Check that out in the forum. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.